if you're not gripping it well, immediately the arms, hands, and club system cannot swing efficiently. Mm -hmm. And no matter how good of moves you make in here, right, these yeah. things are gonna manipulate in some way. Which is super frustrating because yeah. you could be working your butt off on really, really good movement, mm -hmm. not hit good shots, feel gross down here, and you screwed it up before you even started moving. Drop. Butch Harmon said it really well. He was asked, where do you start with a new player? And he goes, I always start with the grip. Okay. So let's start with the grip as well. Let's do it. We've got to look at both the hand and the arm system. Okay. So again, hand system from the elbow down to the, to the fingertips. Okay. Arm system from the elbow up into the shoulder. Got it. Okay. So what's interesting, if we just stand here, Tej, and face the camera, um, if I'm just standing in a neutral state, you see how like both my palms face my thighs? Yes. Okay, so they're not facing behind me. They're not facing away from me. That's neutral. Okay. So this point right here, the opposite, the opposite side of your elbow is called your anacubital fossa. Okay. Okay, that's the technical term. <laughs> Good. And where that is pointed right now is somewhat on this angle here. So we'll just call it roughly 45 degrees. Now some folks stand this way a little bit more. Sure. Some folks stand that way a little bit more. But in general, they're always going to face whoop, this way. Uh -huh. So we'll have both anacubital fossa intersecting here. Okay, got it. Okay, so that would be one that's kind of a look at both the arm and the hand system because that's the transitionary point got it. in our system. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we also have uh, your wrist is, is ultra complex, but if you feel around in your wrist, where I'm pointing right now or poking around right now, there's kind of a knob there. Like a little bone right there. Yep, yeah. exactly. That is the head of your ulnar. Okay. Okay, and then the radius, the head of your radius, you'll feel right there. Okay. Okay, and again, if I somehow was able to just go right through that plane, mm -hmm. we've got that intersection as well. Got it which is awesome because in general, that points about the same direction that the anacubital fossa points. Got it. So just a general rule of thumb, a lot of people get themselves whacked out because they'll either supinate mm -hmm. or pronate this hand system or externally rotate the humerus or too much internal rotation of the humerus. Okay. Okay, most of the time what we'll see is this interesting combo of external rotation of the hum humerus and then pronation here. I see that all the time. So we yeah. just whacked out the whole like arm line there. So now your anacubital fossa is pointing like roughly here. Yep. And then we get this bone, bone pointing all the way over here. Exactly, that's a great visual right there actually. Okay. So it just kind of whacked out the whole arm line and how we just naturally How we naturally stand. stand. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Okay. How this whole system just hangs. Got it. So that's a good place to look at. Now, when you grip it, what we would like, and we hear about this V that's created, I like more a line, like the term line I think would be better than V because that's a V, there's yep. separation here. Once I squeeze here, I've created a line. So, so this, this line right here is what you're talking yep, about, right? Exactly, right okay. in between, um, it's right in this meaty portion of uh, <laughs> the spot between the thumb and the, and the pointer finger. Okay. Okay, that meaty portion we're just squeezing there. Got it. Okay, and then if I wrapped around, this is, this is it really important here, where I'm, I'm wrapping. So we got one, two, three digits in each finger. Yeah. Okay, when you're wrapping, it should come from the last digit starting the wrap and then leaks into the second one. It's never from this joint here, okay? So from, from, from this like knuckle right here, from never the from knuckle. there? It's never from here. So we're not going that way with it. Yeah, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Exactly, okay. we're, and, and it doesn't make sense because what we need is this squeeze and then this wrap so that the club sits between the middle digit of the forefinger okay. and the thumb, like the, the pad of the thumb. So when I squeeze there, now that's what's creating pressure onto the grip. Got it. Okay, so now when you look at that V or better line that we're creating, mm -hmm. we're creating this line that points more over towards your trail clavicle or trail shoulder. Right here, okay. Okay, that's beautiful. And what we've kept is the same arrangement of each head of the ulnar and the radius. So it's on that angle still. Pointing in the and same look direction. look at where that anacubital is pointing. There you go. So now we have neutral-ish. 
Okay. Okay. And again, everybody's a little bit different with this. Some guys just stand a little bit more internally rotated because they have a little bit more flexion in the shoulders when they stand. Fair enough. Other yeah. guys a little more broad here, so the more broad I go, the more external I go. So but, that would be the grip. But maybe the general idea is however you naturally stand is somewhat how you might want to grip the golf club, right? Beautiful way of looking at that, exactly. Okay. And so if we just did that without a club here, just generally in golf posture, let the arms hang, then we would squeeze, okay? And then from the last digit forward, bonk, that's where we would squeeze. See how I'm creating more or less a mirror image in Love both hands. hands. Yep, totally. Yep, exactly. So we would start with that left. Okay, and it would squeeze between the thumb and pointer finger. Last three phalanges, lap on. Okay. Okay, and for most, a little bit of pressure from this, this um, pinky into the palm is good. So that just holds that club in that place That just there. holds it in place, yeah. So we're not letting it like flop around in there. It's like, burnt. Okay, it's in got there. it. Yep, and then we do the same thing here. So squeeze, wrap that, that forefinger around, and then from the thumb and the middle digit there, we're squeezing to, to apply pressure. Okay. Last three fingers lap around. I don't care if somebody 10 fingers it. Okay. Truly. I don't care if somebody interlocks. I don't care if somebody overlaps. Okay. Generally speaking, folks that have shorter fingers, smaller hands, interlocking is going to be better. For longer fingers, overlap is going to be better. Got it. Okay, and for really anybody, especially folks that need more speed, 10 finger would be great. Okay. So for smaller stature, especially like kids. A lot of young junior golfers, mm -hmm. right? That's why we don't teach them to not grip it that way. Exactly. Right? Okay. Exactly. It's just generally going, okay, this is how the hands get on there. Okay. So even if a junior golfer who's six comes in and has a split grip, that's awesome because, man, they can create a lot of <laughs> sure. leverage that way. Just yeah. shoot all the energy out. It's great. Fair enough. Okay. Um, now this is something, you know, I've seen a lot and this is something I feel in my own grip, this thumb right here and mm -hmm. how it fits in Good. to the trail hand, mm -hmm. right? Um, I mean, how would you describe that? I guess it's like, it's going into like a valley here. Yep. So right? that valley yep. is your lifeline. Okay. Okay. So what's nice, what you just described, if, if I go this way, okay. Cause that's generally speaking, neutral standing posture. Mm -hmm. Can I just lift my arms up? and put that right hand or trail hand. Okay, if you're a left-handed golfer, it'd be the other way, but for us righties, uh -huh. that lifeline just sits right where that, that thumb would be sitting. So right? it runs like directly up that lifeline. Boop. Just goes right in there, right yep. through there. So it just sit right in there. So when this, this hand wraps around, the more that it wraps around, what you're doing is squeezing the like meaty thumb pad and the meaty pinky pad uh -huh. together and you create that valley like you yep. described. Okay. And that's right where the thumb would sit. It's almost like a little puzzle piece that sits in there. Yes, that's what it feels like is that they just fit together nicely when yep. you make that, that shape there. Okay. Yep, exactly. And the reason that that fits nicely for you is you have a very neutral grip. Okay. Folks that have a neutral le left hand or lead hand yep. and a stronger trail hand, they don't have that opportunity to have that sit in there. So it's like, where does this uh -huh. kind of sit? Right? Sure. It just doesn't sit in there. So you'll see that often where you see both thumbs. My favorite grips, you don't see that lead no. thumb. And you tell me if this is like myth or real, but when I, when I put this on, it feels almost like it connects the two hands together to where they're now they operate relatively in sync with one another. It's always nice to have like a little puzzle piece that just fits in there nicely. Yeah. I think you probably feel really comfortable with that because you've gripped it so many times that it's like, boom, that Fair feels enough. good, yeah. right? But yeah. you train the heck out of that mm -hmm. to have a, a quality grip. Yep. Okay. The other really important thing about grip is the reason that we, the reason that we need more of a neutral grip within the system. And again, there's wiggle room, there's play room uh, for obvious different reasons. I mean, you see like Fleetwood has a little bit more of a cup up at the top of his swing, mm -hmm. right? Where Morikawa, John Rahm, DJ, They've got more of a flex lead wrist. Okay. Generally speaking, you're going to have a weaker lead hand. So when you flex the lead wrist at the top, that generally you'll see if they're gripping mm -hmm. it, that hand is a little bit weaker. Exactly. Address. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Generally speaking, not always, but generally. Okay. Um, and guys that have a little bit more extension at the top of their swing. So like Fleetwood, for instance. Fleetwood. Yep. Would yep. have a stronger lead hand exactly stronger uh -huh. exactly um and then adam scott has a little bit of a stronger lead hand however so, at the so same why time why is mm -hmm. that why why is there the difference in how they grip it and like what is what is occurring there you know i think sometimes what happens is good athletes like as you progress through the game and you become more and more advanced 
everybody has little quirks that they just latch on to. Yeah. And so you just naturally start, to, without even having coaching, mm -hmm. fall into like matchups. Mm -hmm. And you figure something out that just works really well and feels really well. You hit enough golf balls, you're gonna figure some stuff out. For sure. Um, it's interesting because I was watching a video I think it was a tailor-made video with DJ and Morikawa, and they had them in this video together because they both bow. Mm -hmm. And Morikawa is looking at DJ and he's like, I think people think that we were taught that. <laughs> Nobody ever told me to do that. And if somebody told me to bow my left hand, I don't even know if I could, right? But and it's something he just does. Yeah, right? yeah, he just does. It's just a quirk, okay. which again is, is awesome. Quirks are great. Everybody needs them because you feel things better that yeah. way. You just know your own golf swing. That's my theory on like that little matchup. But it, again, in, in general, like looking at Adam Scott, dual internal mm -hmm. more so, like you look at his setup, yep. especially, especially down in the hand system, more dual pronated. Yeah. So he's got a stronger lead hand, but he's got a really nice weaker trail hand. So that's kind of the pairing that you would see with an Adam mm -hmm. Scott, right? Yep. See that beautiful shape? There's yeah. extension. And that's one of our favorite pairings, right? Is is more more or less, right? A stronger so. lead and, and a weaker trail. Exactly, and for the most part, for general population, mm -hmm. that's a good one because now what they'll they'll tend to do to like leverage the golf club is just RD it all day. If you like, you talk yeah. about RD, <sighs> like that's kind of the natural way they'll leverage the golf club from this strong lead weak trail. Yep. And if you like, go back and watch one of our previous videos on face stability, yes. RD is one of the main ways that you create that stability, right? Exactly, and it's a really easy way to get energy out of the system. Yeah, it's like a hammer, right? Yep, Boop. exactly, Boop. exactly. Okay. And that pairs really well with some extension. Okay. So like to hit it a little further, that's a good way to, to match that up. Sure. Okay. This is a really important point too in that, okay, we've got our hands on the grip, but okay. then how the center of mass of the club is interacting with that is super important. So the center of mass of the club is just the balance point. Okay. So you just hold your club out like that and just balance it out, generally speaking. Got it. Perfect. That's yep. the center of mass. Okay. Okay. From a face-on perspective, the center of mass, um, and it's easier sometimes to just look at like the shaft angle. Sure. The shaft should still be pointed from a face-on perspective inside the lead elbow. Okay. okay. So in here somewhere? Yep. Somewhere in there to the, to the center of mass of my body. So okay. the, the, the general area to set this golf club up, so like if I set up right here, see how the, the center of mass of the club is pointing right up towards my navel? Sure. That would be fine, okay? Or I could have it underneath that lead arm just a little bit more. So now the, sh the, the shaft of the golf club is running up this lead arm, mm -hmm. okay? And the reason being, we're setting that system up in a, in a good spot to be able to now deliver the golf club and hit the golf ball and if you look at every really elite ball striker in general the center of mass shaft and and the lead elbow all line up at, at, at impact so that look there exactly exactly so this sheet plane whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. balance is balanced out accordingly so you definitely won't see guys this way yeah that's an imbalance yep okay. yep and you hardly ever see that because you're just dragging on the club and just generally speaking it doesn't feel like you have anything in that sure okay and you won't see high level players that way where the the center of mass and shaft yeah. run underneath the trail on. so yeah so in general right you can think of like a little box here you got center of mass of your body and and just inside your lead arm mm -hmm. as long as the butt end of the club is pointing somewhere in this region then right? you're good and that's pretty good and the reason mm -hmm. being is because at impact we try to create kind of those same conditions right generally speaking generally yeah the, speaking. the arm system is is especially the lead arm and shaft okay that system should again generally speaking be replaced yeah Okay, and that's a good way to think of like the, the lead arm's job in swinging the golf club. Its sole responsibility or main responsibility is precision. Okay. Because I start with the shaft and the lead arm on one plane. Sure. The leading edge would be on that plane as well. Yep. See how the leading edge is, it looks like a couple of degrees open. Yeah. It's not because it's working down this particular plane here. If I was to go here, then the face actually looks square at that point. There you go. Right. Exactly. So that, that's just by leaning this forward a little bit that Opens looks open, 
But it's still creating that same line that you're talking about, right? This but whole it's, system. It's square to the plane. Got it. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So that's an important one to look at. But again, from a, a swing perspective, if I'm swinging this up, okay, and then I'm swinging it back down, which is how the arm system works in the golf swing, okay, that's its job. Now again, that doesn't look anything like golf swing. No. Okay. So go ahead and set up here, just with the lead arm. Okay. Just swing it up. No body rotation. Good. Now, if you just turn the body and keep that system the same, that all of a sudden looks like a golf swing. Yep. Replacing of it, boom, we want that whole system to be retained. Right, so, so, that, mm -hmm. so here's setup. We're gonna do that same exercise. Yep. Pick it up, turn. Now yep. when I replace, I wanna relatively yep. maintain that system we kind of set it address. Exactly, exactly. Okay. The right arm's job is to create some leverage. Okay. Okay. So if you look down the line, Tej, if you go ahead and set up for us, okay, swing it back to the top and then replace it back to where impact would be. Boom. You'll notice what TJ does really well here is the center of mass of the club through the hands, through this trail elbow is now all on one plane as well. Oh, okay. So if you're going to put pressure against my hands here, you feel what's putting pressure on there. That's, that's the right hand. Exactly. Yeah. So this extension look through this is a support uh -huh. to go ahead and create leverage onto the golf club. Got it. And so that's, that's what creates the feeling at impact, especially for high level players, they'll feel this. What this whole system's doing is like how much pressure I'm gonna put into it. Okay. Especially for like little chips, you can feel it in most folks, feel it in their trail hand. They'll sure. talk about the hand being like what feels like they put the pressure on it compared mm -hmm. to the lead, lead hand and lead arm. They'll feel it in here. And okay. that's why Interesting. Is, is it feels like, okay, well, here's the leverage point that I can put leverage onto the golf ball, either a lot and shoot the energy out of the system. Yep. Or I can just turn and kind of chip it there right. or put a little bit of leverage into it. You can just play with shot making about how far, you know, <laughs> so here's, the golf here's ball. like a lot of leverage, right? And yep. then you, you could turn with that system and, and at a very low rate of energy and yep. you would just be relatively maintaining that leverage through the strike. Exactly. Right. And then if you turn the system with a bunch of energy, you just let that lever go essentially. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Okay. And like the, with the shallowing move too, if we go back to this, some of the shallowing move, we talk a lot about the, the ribs, mm -hmm. but in that transition period, this lead arm going internal pairs with the ribs, mm -hmm. but notice how, like, think of this as like Orion's belt. The elbow, my hands, and the center of mass. Okay. Okay. So Orion's belt's all in line there. Yeah. Now I got it out of line. Imbalance. See how this, I just broke the star system. So why did you break the star system? What did you do? All in the wrist structure. Okay. See how the elbow's not doing anything? So that's a really common one I see people try to do when they're trying to shallow is they just go blunt. Yep. And now the Orion's belt is broken as you just talked about, right? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So if we're back up to the top, I can replace the system uh -huh. because Orion's belt stays in, in harmony. Uh -huh. So now I have these three points yeah. still in line, just like they were here. Yep. Okay. Well, most of that's done in the ribs. Like if I just do it in the ribs, see how that leaks to some internal rotation, in the lead arm, there you go. And that will also help the trail elbow lower. Yep. So now as I turn, we'll see that shape. So now I have this leverage point of, again, another Orion's belt elbow, hand, center of mass cool. to create leverage. Yeah. While I'm still going boom, Orion's belt here, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. All in line. So that's interesting. Like we talked about like the lead arm and how we want to kind of replace, right, that system. Now you talk about another Orion's belt here in the trail arm. What are some common ways that people like mess that up? Well, starts with grip. Okay, starts with grip. Um, so if they grip it, you know, strong yeah. underneath. I see that one a lot. Exactly. Because what, what you're doing, if we go back into these fascial lines mm -hmm. is you're, you're, you're rotating those lines. Yep. So if you take a towel that's wet and you wring it out and then just let it go, where does it, it wants to yeah. go the other way. For so sure. if I've gripped it that way, right. And now I'm going into impact. These forces are crazy loaded. And so now as I rotate, bang. Yeah. Now I got crazy face, face rotation. Yeah. That's why we, we generally speak and actually not generally speaking, always dislike a strong right hand. So to kind of maintain these Orion's belts, as you're talking about, like the main thing mm -hmm. is, is grip. Like you got to make sure it's, it's in there appropriately. And then that, that helps 
tremendously what you're going to do later on. Exactly. That's why grip is important okay. because it is a matchup Got it. based on corks that we have and then also just the leverage points, balance points of the whole system of the arms, hands, and club. Mm -hmm. Like that is the swinging system. Again, we talk about body all the time, but at the end of the day, we talk about body so much because it's there to support the swinging action of the arms, hands, and club. Mm -hmm. Like that's really important to get your head around. Totally. So if you're not gripping it well, immediately, the arms, hands, and club system cannot swing efficiently. Mm -hmm. And no matter how good of moves you make in here, right these yeah. things are going to manipulate in some way which is super frustrating because yeah. you could be working your butt off on really really good movement mm -hmm. not hit good shots feel gross down here and you screwed it up before you even started moving yeah right? yeah exactly grip is one of those things as soon as you change somebody's grip they're like whoa what's going on because they lose the feeling of where the golf club is because it's different in here sure and how the hands get on there directly influences where the face is which mm -hmm. We got to know where the racket is at impact if we're going to hit it where we're looking. Definitely. But this is the most unathletic part of golf swing. You don't have to be any ounce of, a golf, uh, of an athlete to hold it well. And we see that reflected. I mean, like tons of students that we teach right away, like as long as they're deliberate and focused about that process, yep. see a lot of them in here on this line, just like beautiful grips over and over and over again. Yep. It takes no level of athletic ability zero athleticism whatsoever to grip the golf club well. right and if you grip the golf club well that already like there's so many good things that happen as a result of that yeah because again what we want is is the athlete then to figure out the matchups sometimes unconsciously mm -hmm. so i think part of being a, a good coach sometimes is hopefully teaching one important foundation mm -hmm. that then leaks into 15 other principles that you never even have to talk about sure. because now the, the player feels better. Mm -hmm. But it's really important to at least start with the arms, hands, and club balanced out generally well. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it takes 10 shots to feel like, oh, now I feel kind of good. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it takes 30 days. Yes. I mean, there, there's one, one kid that we work with, I and mean, he's not a kid anymore, but he plays professional golf, and mm -hmm. he was indicating to me that it took him about five years for the grip to feel for right. For that to feel comfortable. <laughs> that is a really important thing that you just brought up, because oftentimes when I, when I make a grip change to a student, mm -hmm. it's like two balls in and they're ready to like dish it, because like you said, it now the club feels completely different in your yeah. hands, right? Yeah. So understand that what you're working with is going to help you and just be patient, right? Exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. And as long as it, we can say the be patient part as much as we want, but there needs to be a, a correlation to like, I'm doing this because of X, Y, and Z. Right. When I do these things along with this, it's gonna make the whole system better. So now I can afford to be patient from yeah. like a cognitive you perspective. Have a, you have a reason to be patient. We're right? humans, we're smart, we yep. think. So if somebody tells us to do this and it doesn't make sense to the rest of the whole system, yeah, I'm gonna dish it immediately because sure. I'm gonna go back to what I know Fair at enough. least. So I think that's on everybody, which is, is a really important point as well. Cool. So, okay, that's grip. <laughs> Orion's belt, grip, arms, man. Yeah, we went through a lot of stuff there, but <laughs> that's grip. That was grip, that's a great start and we'll just keep dishing out um, more and more setup principles that go along with the systems that we really like to see. Yes, sir. Um, we love making these videos, guys, so please continue to comment. Um, we love answering questions as well. I mean, the reason that we did this video in the first place is because of the comments that we're receiving from you. Again, if you have any questions, reach out. Thanks again. Peace. Peace.